Hello, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon everyone to all our audience from uh, Investing Not Malaysia. If you are tuning in from Kenanga Group or if you are tuning in from my, my own social media group, EE Cameron. Good afternoon everyone. My name is George, the moderator for today. So let me do some brief introduction of myself, all right, while you're having your lunch, okay. So uh, my name is George, so you'll be first time seeing me on um, Facebook. Uh, let me introduce uh, my background to you. All right, so I'm from EE Cameron, a Chinese uh, blogger, which we are focusing more on value investing. And today, I'll be the moderator for the stock market commentary for you. And this is specially made for the Investing Not Trading Cup 2022. So what this session is all about, so we will talk about the market updates, and later on, we will share with you the latest leaderboard updates from today's morning sessions, um, starting from last week, all right? And then today, we also have a special guest with us to share some of his experience together with all our audiences today. Now, before we get into all our great insightful sharing today, let me do some disclaimer here. So later on, all the sharings that we made and all the um, topics and ideas that we chip in to you will be merely for education purposes and not trading um, by call for you. So if let's say you are looking for some investment um, ideas, do look for your professionals, um, reminders or dealers and do your own research. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, Welcome to the Investing Not Trading Cup 2022 stock market commentary for the week two of the Trading Cup. So let me do some introduction of Investing Not Trading Cup. Yeah? It is a simulated trading competition where you can go head to head with other traders. Now, all the participants will be given a virtual capital of 100,000 to trade equities. ETF and warrants using real-time market data in these competitions. Now, this year, you will get the chance to win 30,000 worth of cash and prizes. And on top of that, just by registering yourself and make three trades, you will stand a chance to win a Sony PlayStation 5 or a Samsung Airbus Pro. Now, if you haven't joined this competition, you can go ahead to investingnot.com to join the competition. We also like to thank our supporting partners, Busa Malaysia, and also three of our diamond speakers, the Naga Warrens by Kenanga, Afin Huang Investment Bank, and also FSM1. Great. Now, if you are having your lunch now, don't worry, you can still turn on your audio and also the video and listen to me and also our guest speaker and also one of our special, special guests today. Right, before we get into all the things that you are waiting for, let me give you some market updates on what happening last week until today. Right, so we are very sad to, to hear the news of the death of, death of our Queen Elizabeth II, which also could affect the sentiments toward the independence of Scotland and also the UK, in particular their politics and also their economic. Right. And we also know the new cabinet headed by our UK Prime Minister, Leeds Trust, will face a lot of challenges in terms of the news that came out last week. Now, we also back at home, we also see the Malaysian's economic recovery is on track as we see our production data and also our economy and our employment data are very supportive. Now, I know all of you are traders and investors, right? You have been noticing that the US markets and also our home KLCI have been rebounded from the downtrend for four consecutive trading days, not including today's, right? So everyone is actually awaiting for the August CPI data, which will be released this evening, pre-market opening in the US. And this data will be the last data shown for the Fed, the central bank of US, to determine whether how many basis points they would like to increase in their coming decision, right? And also, I'm very sad to hear, to hear is that the Russian and also the Ukraine war is still the biggest threat worldwide, and we, we still hope for the war to end soon. Now, back to home. Last week, 
our central bank, Bank Negara Malaysia, had also raised the OPR rate by 25 basis points, and we have seen a strong rebound since then to our KLCI. Now, last but not least, what we should watch out for the coming news and also the ideas that will affect the markets. Now, first, first thing of it will be the table of our upcoming 2023 budget in the Parliament of the 7th of October and also the potential general elections, the 15th general elections of Malaysia. Now, that's all for my market updates. And I know all of you will be long waiting for our guest speakers today. Now, without further ado, let us invite our guest speaker from Naga Warrens by Tenaga, Miss Isabel Zen. Hi, Miss hey, Isabel. George. Good afternoon. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too, buddy. That's it. Great. Um, have, Miss Isabel, have you had your lunch? Uh, not yet. <laughs> not yet. No worry. We will have a lunch after we end this um, commentary to all of you because we want to feed all the information and the ideas to all of our audiences today. Right. So, Miss Isabel, I have a few questions for you and I would like to, maybe you can share some of your experience to all of our audience. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Let the interrogation begin. Great. <laughs> right. So, um, maybe some of you have known uh, Miss Isabel as the um, Head of Retail, Retail Equity Derivative Sales for Kenanga Investment Bank. Now, we also know that her forte is actually in the structure warrant. Now, Miss Isabel, do you mind sharing with us uh, how the investor or a trader can actually use structure warrant um, in different kinds of market conditions, such as we have uh, uptrends market, we have downtrends, and maybe in the kangaroo markets that we have seen in <laughs> current uh, market conditions. Okay. Um, in that case, I need to borrow your iPad. I have some sure. slides which I can show. Yeah, sure. But Simply speaking, when it comes to commenting on the investing note trading cup or whether it's real life, hopefully there are more of transferable uh, information bits that we can share today that people actually use to get really great ROI for your trading cup performance, win some great prizes, but also, more importantly, apply that in your real world portfolio. So I'll give you a few things that I think are useful. Last week, I did share a bit on, let me show you a slide, about what you can do to benefit your own trading ROI percentage in the Investing Note Trading Cup, which was along the lines of identifying what the trends was, a very long-term trend, and when you can see something like our main focus for the Investing Cup, my strategy, if I was trading in this competition, would be focus on HSI. Great. It is a crazy volatile market. As you can see, something like this, short-term daily charts is already 2,000 points. Just range bound is 2,000 points. Wow. But what does 2,000 points mean, right? Something as easy as, let's say, buying something that moves like this, Let me give you an example. Something that moves from 100 points range. 100 points range, even if you get it, not even 2,000, 100 points range gives you 6% ROI. Wow. Something like here, if you buy it at 8 cents around here, this range, to 8.5, that means 8.5 minus 8, as you can see over here. That's already 6%. If it's a put warrant, same thing for a call warrant. If, say, you bought it at 10 cents, sold it at 10 and a half, a couple of very small cents. range. Yes, just 0 0.5 cents. Yes, and that's already 5% ROI. As you already mentioned just now, the leaderboards, you can see that it's not very hard. Um, even though last year we had spectacular returns from people who traded a single stock or a single warrant, if you actually trade Hang Seng consistently a few mm. times, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, 5%, every other day, that adds up to a lot. Correct. So that is my uh, two cents when I say what are the key things to look out for, I mean, in a kangaroo market. Even yep. if it's a kangaroo market, volatile, 
fantastic. It doesn't have to be a bull trend or a downtrend. Sideways, range bound. Hang Seng is your baby, I would say. Cool. Now, Hang Seng, everyone, you did not hear it wrong. You can still trade Hang Seng even in Malaysia, in our Busan, Malaysia, right? Yeah. Just via structure warrant. Now, just now, Miss Isabel did share about the call warrant and put warrant. And you might think, what are those things, right? Now, let us ask Miss Isabel, actually, what are the key things that investors must look out when they are trading the structure warrants? Key things to look out for. Well, mainly, it will be things that people are not so familiar with. For example, stocks like your style, right, at eCameron is value investing. Correct. Dividend stocks, pass it on to my grandkids, pass it on to my <laughs> great-grandkids, right? That kind of story. Correct. But when it comes to structured warrants, it is actually active trading. Yours is more of a passive income style, which Correct. is fantastic. I think everybody should have a passive income component in their portfolio. You should weight your portfolio accordingly, maybe 80% passive income, fabulous. Mm. But if you want to boost up the ROI, you're a bit hardworking, you're like, I need to make uh, so and so much money or ROI before I hit 30 or 40 or 50, you have a target. You have a purpose in life. Yeah. You know? So I would say 20%, 10%, put that into structured warrants and it will boost your overall portfolio without adding on additional risk. I'm not saying put 100% into structured warrants. I'm saying put a small percentage that you can manage. But great question because it is what are the risks of this, right? Correct. So mainly, when you look at structured warrants, I would say consider the MERSTI strategy, which is uh, an acronym. It stands for M-E-S-T-I. An easy way to remember is musti gunakan musti. Musti, yeah. Yeah, so let me share this slide with you. And it talks about the musti strategy on how you can actually employ this when it comes to Malaysian equity warrants first. So there are all these fancy jargon when it comes to structured warrants. They'll talk about effective gearing, sensitivity, volatility, time value decay, da 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 da, da. And it's so much to remember. Right? Your notes can't even go through it. You get tired right. of thinking about it. But Mercy simplifies everything into these five categories. Mm. So the first step for the Mercy strategy is over here. Choose a great underlying share, of course. That can be something that uh, you're particularly bullish in. Perhaps some people are looking at banks right now. Some are looking at oil and gas, even though the oil and gas stocks in Malaysia itself have different reasons for being static at the moment. Yep. We won't cover that today, but you can always message me on Telegram and I'll explain a bit more. But it depends on which stock then sector you're looking at. I mean sector then stock. Correct. So you would consider something like FATA, pretty easy. I'm all about acronyms because I'm a very forgetful person. <laughs> so <Yep. laughs> something like FATA, fundamental analysis to determine a good fundamentally strong stock, mm. followed by technical analysis to determine three things. All you care in life as a trader is entry point, yep, entry. stop loss, and target price. Three things, right? That's all that really matters. Correct. It actually covers all your from entry from to the end yeah. of the trading. Right? <laughs> that is really it. That's all you really care about as a trader. So once you've chosen your stock, you would go into a structured warrant and that's your MERSTI strategy. So let's say you've got M-E-S-T-I. What does that actually mean? M stands for live matrix. You want something that the issuer has to provide a live matrix. Ours is on nagawarrants.com. And over there, you can actually examine how many ticks the warrant has. I'll cover ticks in a moment. But let's just go through the categories, the big idea first. Next, you would look at effective gearing, where you need to balance it with high, many, a few tick sensitivities. So you want high effective gearing. And this really means, for example, if Topglyph C74's effective gearing is 1.84. So 1.84, you're like, what does this number mean, Isabel? Correct. How what does it mean? Arbitrary number is this? just simply hentam 1.84. Uh, in colloquial terms, it really means if 1% goes up on top glove, that means, I'm not saying to pick up top glove, I'm just using it as an example. So if the underlying goes up by 1%, it 
it means that the warrant goes up by 1.84%. Wow. Similarly, it also means if the underlying goes down by 1%, the structured warrants will go down by 1.84%. So that is really the meaning of effective gearing. That's why people look at structured warrants, because you won't be just be getting that 1% from the underlying. You're getting that 1.84%. Mm -hmm. And effective gearing can go up from 1 to 2 to 20 Times. 20 times. Yeah. That's amazing. So it's, you need to get it right. That's why I say the first step, number one, is make sure the entry point. You win from the entry point. You don't win whether it moves or not. I see. So Wait. you need to balance this out with really great tick sensitivity. That means, let's say if you're looking at uh, structured warrants on nagawarrants.com, you would want it to be very few ticks. That means it can move. I'll cover that in a bit in my next slide, but the last Two parts is time to expiry, avoid trading a warrant that has more or less than one month to expiry, and of course, choose a responsible issuer, I. Mm. So we've covered M-E-S-T-I, and what does it really mean when I talk about ticks? This is a really tricky concept, but I think I've summarized it pretty well in this slide. So this is the live matrices mm. on nagawarrants.com. And what it covers, this is called, uh, I just gave it a name. It's called a last defense strategy. Last defense strategy. Yeah, like, you know, the last defense, the last bastion against uh, survival of humankind. Oh. So <laughs> let's say you're looking at hibiscus, for example. This is the live matrix for it. And the gray and white, it means that if hibiscus is 98 cents on the bid, 98 and a half, 99 until one ringgit, you can see the structured warrants price doesn't move. It is three and a half, four the entire time. It stays there. Yeah, it, it doesn't move. It yeah? doesn't move. But that is a function. That means this warrant has five tick sensitivity. One, two, three, four, five. Five ticks. I see. So that's what we call the tick sensitivity. Yeah. That's why a lot of people, when they go into a warrant, sometimes they are like, why doesn't the warrant move? The underlying has moved 20, <laughs> 20 cents. Correct. It is because... That warrants could have 20 ticks. I see. Yeah. So the strategy that I would like to share with you today is, and our viewers, of course, is that you use the structured warrants matrix to identify your tick profit, stop loss, and a few other things as well. So if, say, I'm looking at a short return, hibiscus underlying moves from, say, one ringgit to 110. That's already 10% ROI. Correct. Fantastic. It's a very small range. You're not looking at one ringgit to two ringgit, right? Yep. Doable, doable. But what happens is when you have a structured warrants life matrix like ours to help you, you would consider this. If you're like from me, from Penang, a bit cheapskate, a bit <laughs> conservative, I would say, you know what? I know that 98 cents on the bid for hibiscus, this is the underlying. And this is the warrant, bid and ask. Okay. So I would know that hibiscus, even if it goes from 98 all the way to one ringgit, the warrant will stay at three and a half to four. So why not? I just pick up, if I'm buying offer, mm -hmm. at four cents, right at the top of the matrix, right? If I'm buying over here, say over here in the middle, I would know that it's going to stay there for a few more sense. I might as well see when it's really, the momentum is really moving and then I pick it up at the last defense. I see. And then when I want to take profits, I can see that the grey and white zones, 110, it'll stay at this price, 5.5 on bid for 110, 111 and 112, right? Correct. So why not I take profits over here at the lowest point of the matrix? Mm -hmm. if, my, if I see it goes to 112, it's going to be five and a half anyway. It's the same price. So I might as well go in at the last possible moment and exit the second that it's the most profitable for me. Yeah. Right? Amazing. Yeah, so that's take entry point, take profit, and my stop loss, I can park it over here at the bottom of the matrix. Or I can park it over here at the bottom of the matrix too, when hibiscus is 94 and a half cents, for example. If my stop loss is, say, 97 cents, if I'm trading structured warrants, what's the difference? It's going to be 3 cents all the way here anyway. Correct. Right, right. So that really simply is how I would use the live matrix and ticks as a strategy. So 
Yes, Life Matrix helps you employ the musty strategy for the M part. M part. The musty part, the yep. matrix part. So that's how I would employ it. And just remember, if it's orange in color over here, that means the issuer has increased the offer. It's supposed to be seven and a half cents to eight cents, right? That's one tick. But you can see how come it's seven and a half to nine because the issuer increased the offer when there's a low inventory. Ah. So you can always exit uh, structured warrants even though it's orange, but I would not recommend entering a new position if it's orange, just like a normal traffic light when you drive. So yeah, those are the key things I would say in a quick nutshell of what you want to cover if you're trading structured warrants too. I see. Boost your ROI. Well, so basically you have shared with us on the live metrics. So will this live metrics available to all the investors in the, in, the, in the market? Yeah, of course. So they are mainly used for Kananga warrants. And if you look at other issuers, some issuers have a live matrix, which is great. But some issuers don't. I see. So, so I won't name names, but yeah. you guys are smart. You guys are here. You know how to do your <laughs> research. Everyone's smart. So just check out to nagawarrants.com, am I right? Yeah. To get to the live metrics and to check it out. Now, you, you may be wondering why we are talking about structural warrants, right? It is because that Investing Not Trading Cup 2022 this year, we have added in the trading of the structural warrants. Yay. So, Miss Isabel, I think this is a very happy woo-ha moment for you, right? Because oh, yeah. we added structural warrants. Yeah. So, do you have any things to share with our participants here? Is that, uh, how do you think that added in the structural warrants will enhance their trading experience in this, uh, in this tournament itself? Well, I don't, I know I'm here to talk about structured warrants, mm -hmm. but I want you guys to open your minds a bit. It's not just about structured warrants, they are your slave. They are your tool, your financial instrument to get you to where you want. It's just your, whether you're using a motorbike, a car, a rocket, or a speedboat, mm -hmm. it's just your transportation, right? So I would say that. This Investing Note Trading Cup, it gives you the opportunity to trade different instruments. You got ETFs even, structured warrants on Hang Seng, calls and puts and Malaysian equities, as well as the normal stocks. So it's right. more of the opportunity to try different things, things that you haven't really tried before. And also an opportunity to trade using different trading strategies. You can use a last defense strategy. You can use many strategies um, with no impact on your actual real world cash yet. <laughs> Correct. So yeah, structured warrants, they do boost your ROI percentage, which I really hope to see some top uh, participants use structured warrants. Previously, I can see that in the past week, most of the top performers, they usually have two equities and one structured warrant inside, which is fantastic. Correct. So we will, we will get into the leadership board update uh, later on. But now, uh, because since Ms. Isabel also talked about the you know, structured warrant as the transport transportation tools for you, and also don't forget, this Trading Cup 2022 is merely a simulation game. So you can try out all the investment strategies that you have and it won't harm your pocket and also your wallet. Well, it might harm your ego, maybe, that's all. But that's <laughs> great. Make every mistake from the start. Correct. All right. So, uh, Miss Isabel, will you encourage uh, investors to actually, because just now you, you mentioned about, let them to test out everything, right? So, would you actually encourage them to, um, trade, to, to, to try out their trading strategies, not only in... Um, investing trading uh, this trading card 2022 but also in some demo accounts or some simulations accounts before they invest into the real world ah yeah big time when i started trading i was i went for my first few talks when i was about 16 15 16 i was following my yeah. dad around <laughs> and of course you know growing up in penang they would have talks on everything gold real estate land investing Correct. forex everything i've attended but the problem is you don't actually have the benefit of making mistakes with those kind of uh, investing products yep. when it comes to having a simulation or a dummy account or paper trading people always say yeah paper trade paper trade but Nobody 
as far as I know, a lot of people don't actually do it. Correct. They paper trade for maybe a few weeks, one, two weeks, and they're like, oh, I'm a superstar, I'm a rock star. <laughs> if I actually put money in this, I would have made so much. But when, you, when your first trade is already profitable and it makes you money, that is actually a problem because uh -huh. it gives you an overinflated ego. You don't actually make the mistakes. And when something like, say, COVID hits you, you don't know how to cut loss. Mm -hmm. For example, traders that enter the market during a bull market, fantastic. They have fantastic unrealized P&L and fantastic unrealized profits. Correct. But they don't know how to cut loss. And when it's a kangaroo market, like you mentioned just now, they don't know how to trade. They're totally lost and confused. Mm -hmm. And they're waiting the next 10 years for the next bull run. <laughs> you know, so yep. I would say these uh, simulation games are great because they keep you focused for, let's say this trading cup simulation is three weeks. Mm -hmm. But it keeps you in this uh, simulation environment for three weeks, like driving a car. You know, when you drive a car, it's very easy to learn theoretically. If you play Gran Turismo 7 or let's say even Mario Kart, you're like, oh, look at my driving, it's fantastic. But driving a real car is super different. Correct. A lot of fear comes into play. A lot of unexpected behaviour. Oh, that guy cut me off. That never happened in the video game. This guy jam brake. That never happened before. That tree is in the road. What do I do? So all of these real world things would be... Uh, better reflected in a simulation game. Mm. And that's why I think it's very beneficial because you can actually learn other people's trading, other people's mistakes, and from there you develop good trading habits. Ah, yeah, you're you right. Know? You're right. So, yeah. So, we, we did talk about these um, simulation games and it is ready for you. Just that you need to take actions, test out all your trading strategies here. Now, um, before we enter into inviting our special guests, any encouraging words or techniques you would like to share with our um, participants here, particularly in this uh, Trading Cup 2022? Encouraging words or tips. I would say the best way to learn anything is by doing. So when you join the Trading Cup, fantastic. Even if you get first place, second place, third place, tenth place, or top 30 even is already considered very decent. Correct. Out of how many participants do we have now? 5,000, 6,000 people joining? I would say that's an excellent performance. But remember to practice what you learned in the trading cup. Write down notes so when you actually trade in your real life portfolio, you bring those skills over. Don't bring the wrong skills over of saying, you know what, I'm going to be so lucky because I made 30% in a week on the trading cup. The real world is not very forgiving. The real world is a very harsh and honest place. So learn those habits, but make sure you practice them in the real world. Great, I see. Yeah, that's a very encouraging words to all of our participants and all our audiences here. Now, um, Thank you, Miss Isabel, for the insightful sharing. Now, let us, um, we would like to invite our special guest today with us. Now, let me introduce who is our special guest today. Yeah? So, he is Mr. Woon Chun Fu, who was the last year Trading Cup 2021 top four winners here with us live today to share with all of you about, the, about his experience uh, through this Trading Cup 2021. Now, let us invite Chun Fu. Hi, good afternoon, Chun Fu. Hey, Chun Fu. Hi. Hi, Chun Fu. Can you hear us? Uh, can, can, can. Can, uh, clearly. Fantastic. Can, can. Now, um, we are happy, very happy to have you with us this afternoon, Chun Fu. Now, first of all, uh, when, when I know you, were the, you, you are the special guest, I'm actually very impressed with your result last year that you gotten, right? 80% total returns in the span of three weeks. Fantastic, Chun Fu. Thank you, thank you. Now, um, this is Miss Isabel from um, Naga Warrens by Kenanga. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you, Chun Fu. Hi, nice to meet you too. Great. Um, Chun Fu, now would you mind sharing with us your feelings um, after you have won the top four winners in the last year's Trading Cup 2021? 
Mm, of course, first of all, it's very happy <laughs> because I never expect I can make a great achievement for top four. Then I think I can do better la, for last year, but I did not. <laughs> so that's what I feel. Ah, I see. You are in the top four and you still think that you can do better. Well, there are three yeah, more places for you to actually go up to. <laughs> yeah, because I did not make a few tracks that are under team. <laughs> wow, that also caught my attention when I actually looked through your portfolio. So we'll talk about mm -hmm. it later, right? Yeah. So I, we actually also want to know, is it something that you constantly practice in your real life, uh, your trading strategies that you did last year in the Trading Cup? Uh, almost similar. Almost, almost similar. That, that means uh, yeah. Chun Fu is actually practicing the um, simulation games to the real life. Yeah, I love that. Um, do you mind sharing what kinds of strategies you usually use, Chen Fu? Uh, most importantly, I will look for company that are making profit. And then the trading technical is a uh, oh, start moving up trend. So it's a uh, going up trend. Uh. Great. Uh, so you will look for up trend company. Some, some on trend on, on the team stock. So uh -huh. almost combination of all, 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 all types of indicator. I see. So you mainly hmm. will look for those companies that are making profits. And those that are making losses, you won't look at it. Yeah, yeah I never, I won't look at it. Oh, cool. Uh, would you mind sharing with us what results have you gotten so far in the real life trading? Uh, for my own real life trading, is it? Yes, you're right. Oh, this year is uh, less because this year is market is quite bad, uh, about 20% already. Oh. Decent. Decent, and you got it. How did you transfer those skills from what you learned at the Trading Cup last year? I mean, mm -hmm. what did you bring over? Maybe one or two things that you actually applied in the real world that you never did before. Mm. About the same, uh, it's a little bit my real life. Real life trading is almost the same with the, the competition. I understand. That uh, means yeah. the, the strategies is actually quite work out with, right? That yeah. means you can still practice in real life and making a decent return this year. Even if we have seen a lot of investors that are actually making loss this year, right? That's right. Right. Uh, and very interesting fact that you have mentioned just now, right? I've gone through the last year portfolio of all the top three winners of the Investing Note Trading Cups 2021. And I see most of them, it's not most, most of them, all three of the top three winners, they got their fortune actually via the trading of this company called Avilion Berhad AVI by the stock code. Now, have you noticed that? I, I believe, I bet you, you have, right? And what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Uh, actually, because this stock I already know is uh, not a profit-making company and it's already uh, sleep for quite a long time. Then all of the sudden they go up just because of a new PM that uh, did someone made a rumor that related to this company. So I just ignore it uh, <laughs> because I know we most probably going to be pump and dumps movement. So I'm not going to buy it even though it's really going up like crazy that time. Wow, fantastic. That means you are actually working the plans that you are just mentioning about. This company is not making profit, you won't touch on it. Even it actually let the top three winners won't stand on the podium and you are the top four winners, right? Yeah, um, but I, I love how he walks the talk. Mm. You know, he says, this is my trading strategy. I don't want to be involved in stocks that have a criteria that is not my criteria. I'll stick to it, even though I'm using uh, simulated cash. I think that is the way to do it because you're not competing against top three, top five, whoever. You're really competing against yourself. And you want that consistent profit to be something that you carry forward through life from 2021, 22, 23, 24, 25. You can make from a pump and dump stock once. Some people, they make it in 1997 and that is their strategy for the rest of their life and they might not be making for the rest. But Correct. mentally, they're hooked on that old not so useful strategy. strategies. You are right. Nice one. Great. So, um, will you be? Are you are you actually taking part into this uh, trading cup twenty twenty two this year? Yes, yes, yes. I did. 
And may I know why you actually wanted to uh, took part in this uh, competition this year? Since you have mm, actually yes. already gotten the top four winners <laughs> last year, right? Just try and test my skill and see how, how my performance this year and just test my luck, la, see, see how can I achieve this year. <laughs> cool. So we, we hope to see you again on uh, in, in our leadership board. So later we will check whether our podium, you have, have your name on it and we will see if let's say you have some new strategies to, to try out during this uh, Trading Cup 2022. Cool. Yeah. I did. And I was wondering, with the introduction of structured warrants into the Trading Cup this year, will it affect your trading strategy? Are you a warrants trader or are you? No, I want to stick to my fundamental technical analysis strategy. Yeah, this year I do a little bit different if you look at my recent portfolio for the simulation. I actually tried a lot of the call warrant this year. <laughs> I tried the SSI call warrant and I made almost 10% from the, the 200. Thousand already. Well, cool. I CJK, I think. CJK, I love that baby. <laughs> Fifty so tick sensitivity. Cool for the Hong Kong stock as well. So let's see whether they can become my back or not. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yep. I would love to throw some extra goodies in if they win via structured warrants. I'll be very, very happy to see that. Cool. Now, um. Do you mind sharing with us your target return percentage for this round um, trading cup 2022? If the stock that I buy is within my expectation, should can at least 20 to 30 percent. At least 20 to 30 percent for this yeah. year. So you're, you're yeah. actually not um, looking to achieve what you have achieved last year, which is more than 80 percent. Because last year, the, the competition, they can all in in one stock, but this year they have uh, rules that 40%, so it's quite not possible to make it all the stock that I buy that can go up more than 30% already. I see, I uh, see. It's a good, good, it's a good new rules, la, because last year everyone is all in in one stock, so now this year they cannot make it like this already. Yeah, and it's very different when you're all in in one stock because then you would only say in the first week if you already made 80%, you would stop trading forever until the end of the competition purposely to preserve your, preserve, preserve your realized profit. But that's not how it works in the real world. Cool. Yeah. Right. So, um, Chun Fu, do you mind share with uh, all our fellow participants and also our listeners and also audiences today any tips that you actually have for them or any kind words that you, you have for your competitors in this game? Um, I just want to share that it is always uh, better if you track what you know and don't get formal when others talk that is going up then you feel you are missing out, you want to test high and you just go keep on buying higher price. So just buy what you know and Stick on your own principle. Uh, that's all my my sharing. All right. Thank you, Chun Fu. Thank you for your sharing. Stick to your strategy and stick to your plans. Now, um, yeah. before we, we, we call off uh, Chun Fu, is there any words that you have for Chun Fu, Mrs. Isabel? Oh, no, Chun Fu. I think you are doing great. You've got a steady head on your shoulders. You are doing exactly what I would do. You stick to your strategy and you just execute it like a robot, an emotionless robot. And it might, you know, I'm not saying it works for love, life, or marriage, but for trading, being an emotionless robot is fantastic. All the best, Chun Fu. All right, all the best to you, Chun Fu. Thank you, yes, to, yeah, thank you, thank, thank you for having me with us today. Right. Okay, so now, bye, Chun Fu. All right. So now, before we actually end our commentary today, I would also like to share with you our leadership board. Uh, as at this afternoon, all right? Yeah, I can't wait. What's going to happen is you can see the leadership performances of the different ROI and they rank it and they show you the price movement. And the best part about this trading cup is you can actually press the portfolio and see what other people are trading and their ROI performance on it and learn from that as well. Okay, let's see. Cool. Now we are in the trading cups um, landing page. Let us see. Okay. So we have our top five um, top participants here. The first one will be Sam Obey. 
The second one, we have Jaslyn. And we have Amiru. Cool, Amiru. And then we have Des188 and also Zeno. Zeno. All right, I hope I pronounced your name correctly, yeah? All right, let's look into um, Sam Obey portfolio first. All right. Cool. Well, let us see what are the recent trans transactions we have in this uh, trading cup. Um, I think most of them actually trading Badini, CY Park, LGMS, and some tax companies, right? And then let's look at um, Sam Obey's portfolio. Wow. I, I don't know if you are a he or a she, and you are actually holding three, three, three positions since, let me check it, since the 6th of September until today. What a great job. Do you have any comment on this, Ms. Isabel? And, um, they look more like penny stock counters, and of course, there's an opportunity to make significant returns from that because we do see a lot of movement in these counters. But I won't comment on these counters. I'll leave it to Kananga Research <laughs> to comment on the stock. Cool. All right. So, um, well done. Well done, uh, Sam Obey, for your 23.3% total return. Up until now, we are in the second day of the second week of Trading Cup 2022. Now, let us look at the portfolio of our second place in the podium. Jaslyn, all right. Wow, Jaslyn is 22.7% total return up until now, and it's just 0.6% behind of uh, Sam Obey. Let us look at the portfolio. Oh, I have seen some similar names um, as, as our top one winner uh, currently on the leaderboard. We have uh, Synergens, we have Coraza and SFP Tech. And uh, I think she also trade only these three stocks until now. Cool. And we hope to see more uh, trading of structure warrants uh, to actually boost up your portfolio and see if you can um, make it your fortune over here in the games. Yeah, All right. But I only recommend structure warrants if you know what you're doing. If you haven't actually done your homework, you don't really know how to trade structure warrants, then learn. Learn you first. know, yeah, you don't have to jump in just because everybody is jumping in. Don't, like he said just now, don't have FOMO. Correct, don't have FOMO now. If you want to know how to learn for, on this, maybe you can check out nagawarrens.com. I believe there are some educational videos on it, right? Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, now we look at the last one, the, the top three on our current leaderboard. We have Amiru Anwar, who is making a total return of 21.3%. Very decent, very tight compared to the number two position. Correct. I think maybe next week we shall see if all three of them are still on the podium. Right. Um, yeah, we still we are also still seeing some similar names. I think these are some very hot stocks uh, recently in the market. So everyone's actually trading these kind of... Uh, I think there are some IPO stocks on it. But Amiru and is actually making a lot of trades. Yeah. Right. Different style of trading, as you can see. Uh, but what's interesting is that compared to last week's leaderboard, this week's leaderboard is totally different. The names. I mean, I won't mention the, the names. names. <laughs> I know you guys are a bit hurt if you're not on the top 20 leaderboard if you were last week. Um, but the names are totally different. So I suppose everybody is just chasing those uh, uptrending stocks for that week. And I look forward to seeing the overall positions after this. Cool. Now, um, we still have uh, 10 more days to go, which is um, seven trading days to go, right? So I think that's the end of uh, our commentary sessions today. Before we end it, uh, Mr. Isabel, any words you have for our audiences today? I would say you just have to remember what your purpose is for joining this trading competition. If your purpose is just to do whatever it takes to make it into the top five, then and you want to abandon all your previous rules, then that is your purpose. You really want that 10,000 ringgit. If you have a different purpose, which is to learn from others, make full use of all the comments, I realize that there's a lot of very useful people commenting as compared to, say, a WhatsApp group where everybody is kind of like <laughs> Pasar Malam style, you know? Correct. But I feel that in the people that commenting on the Investing Notes Trading Cup uh, website and the different sort of follow-ups that they have for the trading ideas, I find that very useful. 
And I would say look into those as well, learn for your own knowledge. So just remember your purpose. What are you trying to get out of this trading cup? And don't get so uh, confused, you know, by all the noise that happens in the competition. Correct. So you just need to take away. What you have to take away is that from Chun Fu, stick with your own plan. Right. So that's the end of the commentary sessions. Please don't forget to follow Investing Not um, social media, Naga Warrens by Kenanga, and also EE Cameron social media page. So the tournament will resume at 2.30 p.m. later. Good luck and all the best to you all. We shall see you next week.